Hello, this is the Clay Golem, this is Foundry VTT, and this is a brand new series. We're starting a mini series about automation within Foundry VTT and specifically version 12. So um, in this video, what are we going to do? So first of all, we're going to talk about what do we mean by automation? Because that word gets thrown around an awful lot. Um, so we're going to talk about what uh, what versions we need of things, what we mean by automation, what is already in place uh, within the base foundry system, and then we're going to look at how we can use the various automation modules, so MIDI QOL, you may well have heard of that, and accompanying modules that support MIDI QOL so that you can choose to automate your games if you want to. Now, throughout this series, I will talk about why you might want to, why you, why you might not want to. Uh, and for some people who have been around on this channel before, we have looked at automation previously in version 11 of Foundry. Uh, so there might be some stuff that's repeated here, but a lot of things have changed the way that we do stuff. So uh, you might find this useful as well. If you're new to Foundry, this little mini series is definitely for you to understand why even bother doing it. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Now, the most important thing is this mini series is going to be based on a specific set of um, builds within Foundry because every time there is an update to Foundry, it changes the way things work. Every time there's an update to the game engine, we're using the D&D game engine. Every time there's an update to that engine, it changes how things work. We are currently at a stable point. Uh, so now is the right time to do it. Uh, and the mods that we'll be looking at are almost caught up with us. Um, and by the time we get to the end of this mini series, they will be finished so that we can showcase the whole thing. What am I talking about? Okay, so on the right hand side of the screen looking at my settings, I am currently running Foundry version 12. I'm on stable build 330. There has just been an update, um, but I haven't done that. Uh, on also, I am on the D&D game engine. You can just see it there. I know it's a little bit small and I'm on 3.3.1. Now that's really quite important because if you're on a different version of the game engine, you may find that some of these things don't work the way that I'm doing it, or they work slightly differently, or you can't load some of the mods because they're wrong versions. So I have gathered the information from the various modders and things. This is a stable place to lock down and to not make changes, not update the game engine or the Foundry version beyond version 12 yet because it works. <laughs> so lock that in. If you're not up to this at the moment, you might want to upgrade now. For those of you who've hung back with the D&D game engine because there were some issues, we jumped over those issues. We're beyond them now. 3.3.1 is the stable place where things are working. It's where all of the testing has been happening. Uh, and there is a expected lock at this position because Foundry version 12, uh, sorry, version 13 is in the works. Um, over half of the work has already been completed. That doesn't mean half of the time has elapsed because obviously some things are much easier to do than others and they might have done the easy stuff first. So that's still a way off. However, we do know that they're working on the D&D &D game engine 4.0 with the expected release of the D&D &D books 2024. So there will be some major changes here. So the advice really is to lock at this point so that you've got a stable platform and not to keep pushing forward until other things are in place. Now, I know for... I'll get on with it in a minute, I promise. I know for quite a number of my viewers, you are still on version 11 because you're waiting for things to be in place before you update to version 12 because you've locked in a place that works. You don't want to be messing around. This mini series will show you what is currently working. Now, just based on this, I'm not saying update right now. If you're in the middle of a campaign and you're running a live game, don't do that. But you're we're really, really close. Um, 
The main modules that we will look at through this series, just so that you know, will be MIDI QOL and the appropriate DAE, so the dynamic active effects that comes along as that package. We will be looking at the uh, the MISC, which is the uh, MIDI item showcase community items. We'll be looking at that. We'll be looking at Chris's pre-mades. Now, Chris's pre-mades is just entered well, it's entered its third version of beta testing at the moment. So that is getting very, very close, but it's pretty much just all of the spells at the moment and a couple of other bits. There's still more to come, but they're working their little bottoms off um, towards that. So again, as we move through this mini series, that will be ready and we'll look at it when it is. We're going to be looking at Gambit's pre-mades as part of that. Uh, we're also going to, because you guys have been waiting for Dfreds, um, Dfreds is also now available. Caveat to that, Dfreds has changed quite significantly with some of its function. Now the things that it does are all doable through Chris's pre-mades on the back end. Uh, at the moment, the only thing that Dfreds gives us in addition to that is that little button clicky interface so that we can directly apply things. Now, uh, again, if you've been following along and you're waiting for those things, one of the reasons why we lock into System Place is because when core things in the game engine or in Foundry change, it affects stuff. And one of those challenging areas that's been changed in the game engine is to do with conditions. And Dfreds is all about conditions. So the access to be able to set those is very, very different. So they've had to strip back some of that stuff from Dfreds because it's just not doable in that way anymore. Um, so it is not the same as you would have used previously, but once again, others have done what they can to compensate for it. All right, so um, what do we mean by automation? Let's start off with that, especially for those who are new to Foundry or looking at Foundry. So I have, let me show you, zero modules okay so this is core foundry core dnd engine no modules nothing adjusted at all and i've got my uh, my character here sorryman the wide and i've got a goblin and we're just going to show you that the fact that some things are already in inverted commas automated so let's have a let's just have a quick battle and demonstrate that um, if you don't, if you're not used to Foundry and you're thinking like, what you're doing, why you're clicking on there, um, we'll cover that some other time. Uh, but I don't want to extend this into a how to do combat. So, sorry, man, why is here? Oops, hang on a minute, because I've got nothing in. I've got no combat carousel. Oh, I missed the thing so much. So let's roll our initiatives. We can do that. Thank you very much, and we can begin our combat. And we're going to start with Sorryman. So I'm going to open Sorryman's character sheet here. Uh, and go to his items and he's just going to start this combat with a quarter staff so when I click on the item to make my attack it's going to give me a message in chat it's not done anything except give me a message to say click your attack roll so I'm going to click that attack roll it's now asking me whether I'm rolling for advantage normal or disadvantage and roll a normal attack because I have it targeted it is automatically telling me whether I hit or not that's automation. That you didn't used to be built in. It is built in. That's automation. It's automatically checking if I've hit that target. I can now roll my damage knowing that I've hit. And of course, I can choose critical or normal damage. If he's using it two-handed, he can choose critical or normal versatile damage. Sorry, man uses it two-handed. And there we go. So it's telling me that I have rolled eight damage against that goblin and I can hit this apply button and you just saw in the middle of the screen there the goblin took that damage and in fact died from one smack from Sorryman which is not a huge surprise just heal him up again so I'm having to click every time I want to oh, tell it to make an attack then tell it how to roll that's not automated but it does automate checking if that hit actually hit and when I say apply damage it's is automatically applying that damage for me at the click of that button. I don't have to open the character sheet and manually change that. So that's what I mean. There are, that's automated. That is automation built in. Is it great? 
Yeah, it works. It, absolutely, it works. But it, it's not it's not my labor saving very much. As Foundry continues to evolve and the game engine continues to evolve, we can expect to see more of those things actually properly automated um, and more and more of the workload being taken off of the player uh, and the DM. But we don't want to, by default, take away uh, too much of the dice rolling and stuff from our players. So that's what I mean by automation. Now let's change let's change something else. I know I'm uh, sorry, man's having more than his one go. What happens if we cast a spell? Well, actually, I put you next to next to you again. If I cast a spell such as Shocking Grasp, again, I'm getting my ability to attack, and I need to make my roll. It will tell me whether it hits or not. Okay, so that's automated checking of whether that scored a hit. I didn't hit, I shouldn't do damage. Let's assume I did hit, because I can override this, because I can just say, ah, I've decided it hits. Uh, I can roll that again, and then I can apply that damage, and I've killed this poor goblin again. Now, there's no, there's no effects there. There is no, nothing particularly interesting kind of happens. Uh, it's all based on those dice rolls and clicking buttons on the right hand side to do stuff. So there is some automation in there, but it's very light. OK, so we are going to, through this series, we're going to look at some of the things that we can reduce the number of those clicks. So our oh, click attack, then I choose that and then it tells me whether it hit, then I've got to roll damage. But what we also have to remember is what if Sorryman is a barbarian? Don't tell him. He doesn't know he's a barbarian. But Sorryman's a barbarian. Um, what if he's raging? Will it automatically reduce his damage as it should? As, a, as according to rules as written? Should it automatically give him extra damage? Let's try, shall we? So if I go to his features and I click rage, it's going to ask if he wants to consume ability. So that's automation. Okay. So just looking here, he's now got three out of four. Uh, and as you can see in the chat, it's saying, oh, it's rage and I can apply that effect. Now, I do want to make sure I've got the right token selected and apply rage. So I've got my little icon on there and I can apply that to him. He's now raging. It says here that he's raging uh, and it should last 60 seconds. I just realized I took these two out of combat, didn't I? Did I? No, I just closed the window. That's fine. We can rage again. It's... There we go. Put them back in. <sighs> okay. So he's now raging. So what we would expect is if he hits this poor goblin, let's clear the chat. Let's keep it nice and neat. We would expect if he hits that goblin, he should get a plus two to his damage because he's a raging barbarian. Sounds like an insult, doesn't it? So let's do that attack normal roll he's hit significantly in fact he's got a critical hit so now let's do that versatile damage and we're going to roll critical hit for it now how much damage has that actually done we can just using this we can see he rolled a three and a one because it was a critical hit um, and we can see he did a total of nine damage but if you look above this he did 2d8 plus three plus an extra two so the fact he's got the rage condition on, he has automatically, so it's automation, automatically added that plus two onto his damage. Right, brilliant. Let's not apply that damage to that poor goblin because it's going to kill him again. <laughs> Let's say it's the goblins go. We're going to go back the other way. Now we expect Sorryman should have his damage reduced on the basis of he's a barbarian. I've got to open this goblin up. I've got to go to his equipment and I've got to click his attack to make this happen. So let's roll our attack and see. I'm going to do it at advantage because I want Tim to hit. I'm going to do it until he does hit. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, right, okay. So we've managed to hit Sorryman with advantage and now we can roll our damage. Let's roll our normal damage. And we currently, it tells us we rolled a one plus two. So we've got a total of three damage. Watch Sorryman when I hit apply. It only did one hit point of damage. So again, there is automation there already built into the game system that says you're raging. That means you have resistances to, and in fact, look, you can we go on to here. Oh, it doesn't tell you on that bit. 
Uh, if we hover over here, that resistance to bludgeoning, piercing and slashing. So that scimitar should do half damage, which it did. Three divided by two rounded down. That was the one point of damage we saw. So there is automation already in here, but it is not here for everything. It is for rage. Um, it's not necessarily for other things. So that's what we want to look at and what we want to address. All right, so um, we're not going to get into the modules in this one. I just wanted to introduce that idea of, of what are we talking about when it comes to automation. The decisions you need to make as a player with regarding automation are going to be around how much of the dice rolling and decision making do you want to remove from your players. Just getting rid of that. I should have pointed out actually during combat rounds rage will also time out so it will and it didn't used to do that either that's relatively as in last six months a relatively new feature that some of those abilities um, will each round it will count down how many rounds you've got left and then it will automatically end that ability um, so that used to be something we would have to automate outside of the game but actually it's built in now so our question is, how much of this dice rolling and clicking on the right hand side do we want to take away from our players and how much we want to take away from our DM? Also, with things like those spells and effects, not all of them, certainly not all of them by a long shot, necessarily work for us. In other words, we just saw Rage, Rage works, it works gives us our extra damage it gives us our resistances but a lot of spells do not do that and a lot of features do not do that such as the fighters um, parry ability it's, it's not there it's not within the core game and not at this point so how much of that do we want to try and automate and make happen so the dm isn't having to go oh right that's it you're parrying so i need to take that number and i can't apply there i'll have to open your character sheet and manually adjust it just like we used to do in the old days, paper and pen, we used to have to do all of that work, right? Uh, and we didn't mind, we didn't care, we didn't even notice it was part of the game. But if we can reduce the admin, it can make our games smoother. We can focus on the story and stuff. So only you as the DM can really make that decision, knowing your party, knowing the type of adventure you're doing, how much automation to put in. We're going to look at going through from the base game automation we've just looked at, all the way through to fully automating absolutely everything we possibly can. Uh, and then you can decide how far along that journey you want to go and how it will suit your players. I personally have a preference with trying to take as much admin off the DM as possible, but leave as much control and dice rolling in the hands of the players as possible. That's that's what I want. I don't want to take away their dice rolling, but I also want to make my life much easier. So think of the scenario. Sorry, man, one on one with a goblin, not a big deal. You've got a party of four adventurers against 20 goblins. That's a lot of dice rolls each combat round, and you know how long that can take to do. So what can we do to really speed that up? That's what we're kind of looking at here. What are we not looking at in this series? So there is obviously, perhaps not obviously, a big difference between automating and animating. So when we cast spells and things, shiny effects, our fireball blasts out, we're not looking at those pretty graphic things. We might, some of them we will encounter anyway because they're built into some of the automation, but that's not the purpose of this. We're looking at the automation of our game rather than the animation of our game shinies is something slightly different and we've covered that as you know look at the look at the previous videos we've done that include um automated animations it's a bit confusing because it's called automated animations but it's automate automating just the animations part of it all right so uh, not much left on this video but i do want to just uh, show you that the very first thing we are going to look at um is not in there at all it's in manage modules the first thing we're going to look at in the next video is we're going to be installing in fact i'm going to click the button now midi qol so if you're not aware of this one midi qol by tim posney um, who is an absolute legend in the community with the work that he does on automation uh, almost everything to do with automation 
is built into, onto, or around to integrate with MIDI QOL. It is the automation core, if you like. Um, so th this is going to be the first one we look at. Now, what you will notice if you've not installed modules before um, is when you try to install modules, some of them have dependencies. In other words, the module needs some backup from other things. So for MIDI QOL, that includes the socket lib, which is a, a socket library. OK, so it's a background function that just helps the mods talk to the right places in Foundry, etc. Uh, lib wrapper, which is a library wrapper. Uh, it's connected with that ability. I don't understand it. You don't need to understand it, but it won't work without it. Uh, and the last one is the dynamic effects using active effects, DAE. OK, so dynamic effects using active effects, DAE, goes hand in glove with MIDI QOL. MIDI controls all of the automation stuff. The dynamic effects, um, the DAE, is what's applying some of those effects that come out of the automation. So that's the very first uh, set we need to look at. I'm going to save that and it's going to reload my game for me. Here we go. We're back in. Nothing has changed absolutely nothing if I go to manage modules you can now see we had zero we've now got four so in the next video that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be starting to look at MIDI QOL what can it do what doesn't it do we're going to walk through the types of settings that you can choose it's really really flexible for deciding how much automation that you want in your game um, you can run MIDI QOL and automate just a tiny little thing because it's one thing that annoys you. Or you can use MIDI QOL to drive the automation of your entire game. So we're going to look at those levels. We're going to work through it. And that might not be one video because it's a big baby. <laughs> it's a big baby. It does a lot. So uh, we will we'll take our time. And remember, this is a tutorial series for those who perhaps have never used any automation at all. And you're kind of going, oh, everybody talks about MIDI QOL. What the hell is it? I've got to install it. Don't install it until you know what you want to use it for. Um, because it gets complicated. And you can accidentally make your life harder and you spend more time trying to sort out the automation than it would be just to run your game. Okay, so don't install it unless you know you need it, want it, and how to use it. So we'll put that caveat on there because we all get a bit click happy, don't we? <laughs> anyway, um, just an introductory video for this series. Um, stay happy, leave a like. Leave a comment if there's something specific you're looking for to automate. We'll probably get to it anyway, but leave it in there. Again, we're not looking at animations in this series. We might do a different series on that. This is just a mini-series on automation itself in version 12 of Foundry. Take care, guys. Thank you for watching. Appreciate all your support and help. And, of course, if you're not subscribed, it really helps out the channel if you do that. Take care.